As dusk falls over the southern Philippines, fishermen heave to for another night on the Sulu Sea. <laughs> for centuries, boats like these and the Basnigeros who've worked them have crossed Asia's watery borders to eke out a living. <laughs> But a decade ago, these boats returned with a more lucrative and deadly catch. Muslim militants who had fought in Afghanistan, including those who had formed the region's most feared group, Jamaa Islamia. This is Terra's transit route, and it's still being used today. For the first time, J.I. speaks out from militant camps in the southern Philippines, and we reveal how open sea borders, government corruption, and a network of support are allowing Muslim militants to move freely across the frontiers of Asia. Even if you had the US 7th Fleet in there, you couldn't control the area. You just couldn't. I mean, unless you really literally stop everyone and question him, and you would go bananas because uh, there would be thousands going back and forth every, every day. Politically, the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia are separate independent states. But geographically, this archipelago has hidden links. The southern Philippines island of Mindanao flows to its neighbours through a chain of islands that for hundreds of years has been a Muslim trading route. A militant haven known for the ferocity of its Islamic gunmen is at the heart of these islands, Sulu, and it's here that we start our journey. From the air, these islands look idyllic, but Sulu's main town, Holo, is known for two things, smuggling and kidnapping, especially by the militant group, the Abu Sayyaf. So while here, we are ordered to stay at military headquarters. Our guardian is its commanding officer, Colonel Alexander Yapching. <laughs> Leaving base is only with full security, but it's as much for them as it is for us. These are Christian soldiers in a predominantly Muslim region. More Abu Sayyaf gunmen have been caught here in town than in the hills. So even at the registration for local elections, the army can't be sure who is friend and who is foe. People are now uh, registering. The military cannot get re the real report. Not because the people are not supportive to us, military, to the government, not because they are very supportive to that group. They just want to evade the uh, violence or encounters that uh, might happen. From her home in Holo, journalist Norlan Mustafa has spent a lifetime reporting on the militants. She says army abuses have destroyed the people's trust. The so-called military abuses, the, the unwarranted arrest, the killings. Why do the Abu Sayyaf have community support? Naturally, because they are of the community. Their families are there, they belong to clans, they are members of the community, and they don't do the people any harm. In fact, they protect the people. It's this militant environment that's been infiltrated by foreign fighters, including Jamaa Islamia. When I was still in the intelligence uh, unit, we gathered reports that uh, these people, these terrorists, are being uh, supported or being trained by uh, foreign uh, terrorists. Here in Holo? Yes.
Sulu's mountainous interior provides perfect cover for armed rebellion. The most active here, the Abu Sayyaf, are known for kidnapping and beheading foreigners. But they say they're fighting for autonomy. Their leader calls himself Ahmad. It's in groups like these that the foreign fighters of Jamaa Islamia are both now training themselves and recruiting others. From within this camp, we have obtained the first statement by an active JI operative. Bobby claims to have met Osama bin Laden and insists the arrests of JI's leaders will not weaken their resolve. <laughs> J.I. is not operating here in isolation. Sulu is now the base for at least 3,000 militants from several groups with strong ties to the Middle East. Whether they're J.I. or whether they're Abu Sayyaf or M.I.L.F. or M.N.L.F., they're really one homogenous group. Opposition Senator Sergio Osmeña is an anti-corruption campaigner and specialist on the Muslim South. The United States military did recruit many, many, many young Filipino Muslims to fight in the Afghan war. And when that war was over, these guys came here, but they, were, they had been trained. And so they converted into uh, local Muslim insurgents and later on, some groups splintered off and just became bandits and kidnapping syndicates like the Abu Sayyaf. To see why the militant message resonates here, you just have to visit Hollow's Hospital. Even compared to the poorest Christian village, Staff say the shortage of medicines, equipment and beds means it's far worse for children here. Duty doctor Radan Ikabala says Muslim families are kept poor by army operations and the increasing Christian domination of the local economy. Every day there are military operations in the mountains so those people cannot get the fruits of the mangosteens, of the durians, of the coconuts because of these operations. How do the local Muslims feel about the services? They can't get their fish, they can't get treated at hospital. Depressed. Angry? The young ones are mostly angry. Not surprisingly then, many of Sulu's young seek meaning at the mosque. Among them, 22-year-old Sharif Harin Abu Bakr. After prayers, Sharif joins a Quranic study group called Jama Tablik. Jama Tablik is just uh, duty. We're just working for the duty of being a Muslim. Often schooled by radical missionaries from Pakistan and India, 
Most of these young men have bachelor degrees, but no work. We do not have work at this point of time. So we, are, we embrace our time in this work, Tablig. So our mission is to connect him, to invite him to worshipping Allah. Worshipping Allah. They feel powerless, they feel disillusioned, they feel alienated. And then here comes a leader who tells them, we can uh, bring about change, who knows how to conceptualize a kind of ideology that is based on a very powerful um, uh, unifying factor, which is religion. Hollow's port reveals the ease with which foreign preachers and J.I. operatives alike can move into this region. Thousands of so-called pump boats ply these open straits, a security risk the military admits it cannot control. There are a lot of sizes of pump boats, pump boats that can uh, carry a maximum of eight personnel, and there are also bigger pump boats that can accommodate up to 30 passengers. And are they faster than the Navy? Yes, but sometimes it's not the mobility that is the problem. The real problem is how to detect and distinguish them from any ordinary uh, seafarers. Hollow's single aging patrol boat is barely able to leave port, let alone chase fast craft on the high seas. Today it intercepts a small ferry, mainly for our camera. But at times these Navy vessels are deployed not for security, but for corrupt personal profit. The equipment of the Navy is used to smuggle by the senior officers of the Navy. So we have very few vessels and they're used for private gain. So you've got less, even less vessels uh, patrolling the area. So you've got a practically open border between the Philippines and Malaysia, the Philippines and North Borneo. So the moment they get into this country, they've got free reign. I mean, they can go anywhere they want and they won't be stopped. On mainland Mindanao, Zambawanga is an international port through which Filipinos, Indonesians and Malaysians can all easily pass. You can't tell the difference. They're of the same ethnic group. They all speak the same language. And so how do you block or interdict anybody who's coming in when they, they, they come in dressed like everybody else and speak the same dialect. Twice a week, the Donica Joy ferries thousands between Zambawanga and Sandakan in Malaysian Borneo, all via the militant haven of Hollow. This is now the known route of many foreign fighters moving to Muslim training camps in Mindanao. Passports are given a cursory check at best, but that doesn't mean much. For prosecutor Ricardo Cabaron, the local cocktail of guns and corruption makes this a Wild West frontier. People travelling from these places have easy access, so long as they have money and they can afford to hire uh, this uh, fast sea craft, they can travel to and fro without even uh, them presenting their passports if they can evade and avoid authorities. Mindanao's open coast has enabled the survival of Asia's biggest and longest running Muslim insurgency, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. <laughs> When we were here five years ago, its main base at Camp Abu Bakr was in full swing, a place that trained thousands of Muslim Filipino guerrillas. But according to court testimony and the Philippine security chief, 
Camp Abu Bakr also trained JI fighters, including some of the Bali bombers. Camp Abu Bakr then was the veritable training ground for regional terrorism. Including JI? Yes, they were really grooming it to be the center for training of the JI in the region. The army has raided the main camp, but with 12,000 guerrillas, the MILF have regrouped for what they insist is a legitimate struggle for Muslim rights. Its military commander, al Haj Murad, is now the group's supreme leader. He denies organisational links with JI, but admits its fighters could have been here. There have been visitors coming to Camp Abu Bakr. But these are not going there for training. They are just mere visitors. We open the door for uh, any visitor coming to a camp of Bakar. And we don't distinguish whether this is, a, this is from Jama'ah. Uh, because actually, uh, all this uh, Jama'ah, Islamia, Al-Qaeda, all this group came only after the September 11 attack in New York. Nobody knows who are Jama'ah, Islamia. Nobody knows who are Al-Qaeda until the September 11 uh, attack. Because that's the problem, isn't it, now, that all these people are saying that they trained here yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. in MILF areas. Yeah. So it oh. looks like the MILF has been training JI. It is possible that some of our men have, uh, have some personal relations with some, with some uh, members of this group. But uh, these are on the level of personal relationship. As far as organizational is, uh, there, there is no uh, linkage between Jama'a Islamia and all that. Given what happened with Bali, do you regret the fact that MILF has had this personal contact with JI? Maybe some of our people might have known some member of the Jama'a Islamia while they were in Afghanistan, but we never cooperated with them in any manner. We have no relationship whatsoever. Mm. And... Uh, uh, as, as, as far as uh, we are concerned, we, we condemn uh, such activities like, this, uh, that, like what happened in Bali. We strongly condemn and uh, we, we declare that this is un-Islamic and uh, we sympathize very much with the victims of, the, of this famine. So far, the United States has not proscribed the MILF as a terror group, but any insurgency is now a potential target for JI. We must be wary of uh, continued exploitation by both JI and, um, and Al-Qaeda. The region is a natural migration area for terrorists because a lot of pressure had been put on the terrorists, the international terrorists, after the Afghan war. They would hope to find more hospitable areas where terrorism can survive and grow more easily. And Southeast Asian region is a candidate for that any time. With the United States acting as mediator, Murad is now leading efforts for a lasting peace deal with Manila. But again, terror's true allies in the Philippines appear to include government corruption. In the early hours of July 27, 296 officers and men from the Philippines Armed Forces took over a part of Manila's business district. Their main grievances, poor pay, poor conditions, and most disturbingly, that their senior officers are selling arms and ammunition to the same Muslim guerrillas they're fighting, a charge confirmed by the MILF. In Philippines, weapons can be bought in any place. It is just like buying fish in the market. We have been buying firearms, uh, although we don't distinguish whether it's coming from the military or anywhere, but uh, locally we are, we are buying firearms. And it can be bought from civilians, it can be bought from uh, military. Fire! 
They're sold to the uh, Abu Sayyaf. They're sold to the MILF. They're sold to the MNLF. So, I mean, these are not individual type of sales, uh, small-time, retail type. This is wholesale. For as long as that level of corruption continues in the Philippines, there's little hope of an end to Islamic insurgency here. And that will make their so-called fight against terrorists in a never, never ending saga. It's like you're filling a bottle with water that has a hole in the bottom, okay? So you can never fill up that bottle. Further afield, we are told the arrests of Hambali and the Bali bombers go far in crushing Jamaa Islamia. But with its open borders, militant camps and government corruption, the Philippines remains one of the most resilient breeding grounds of Asia's Islamic terror.